Okay, so this is a um, another angular momentum lecture, but it's going to be a little different. Uh, we're going to work off the fact that angular momentum can be thought of two ways. Last time we said it can be thought of as moment of inertia times angular velocity. This time we're going to say that angular momentum is equal to r cross p. And so um, in, in both cases, uh, we're solving for angular momentum, but uh, sometimes uh, using the idea that uh, angular momentum is, is equal to moment of inertia times angular velocity, right? And it is a vector, um, is, is gonna be the better way. Another way is angular momentum as a vector is equal, let me just make this more better of an L, okay, is equal to uh, the vector R times the vector P or the cross product, right? So we call this the cross product and um, it's very similar to what we did for torque. So let's remind ourselves what we did for torque. Um, when we had torque, we said that it, uh, torque is equal to R perp times F, or we could have said F perp times R. I'm gonna do this method instead. Uh, so that's the case. Then we know that the pivot is right here at the where the, uh, the nut is, or the bolt, or whatever you're turning. And the shortest distance between the line of action, which is, uh, if the force is this red line right here, then the line of action is this dotted red line that um, we can follow the force back. And uh, the dotted blue line then is our perp. Uh, it is the shortest distance between the line of action, the red dotted line, and the pivot. And we can also say that this angle theta in yellow right here is also the same as this angle right here in yellow, which, you know, this should be review from last time, um, but, but that's true. That means that R perp is an opposite, and because of that, R is a hip, and all that's true because the blue dotted line is perpendicular to the red dotted line, and so therefore that is a 90 degree angle right there. And so anyways, we can then say that uh, sine theta is equal to op over hip, the opposite is equal to the hip sine theta. <clears throat> and we can then say that uh, the opposite, r perp, is equal to r sine theta. So um, if that's the case, then that means that uh, torque is equal to uh, r perp times f, and torque is equal to r sine theta times f. Or, like I have written up above, the torque equals rf sine theta. Now, um, let's go ahead and solve that really quick. We can then say torque is equal to 0 0.2 meters times sine of 30. Sine of 30 is that nice one where it's just, well, let me get rid of this and make this a little larger, um, where it's just equal to 0.5. Uh, and I think the force here, what do they tell us, is 40 newtons. All right, so we get then torque is equal to um, half of 40 is 20, and 0.2 is the same as a fifth, so a fifth of 20 is 4. 4 newton meters for our torque here. Now, a question becomes, is it positive or negative? Let's go back up and look at it. We see that this uh, turning motion is going to be directed in the counterclockwise direction, so we could say counterclockwise, but we also know that that is the positive direction. Um, the only thing here we don't like about this is that uh, torque is a vector, right? The, this is, uh, the cross product is also referred to as the vector product. Unlike um, uh, work, right? Work equals f dot d, which uh, this is the dot product. So, uh, it's when you multiply two vectors and you get a scalar. So uh, work uh, as a change in energy is not a uh, point. It doesn't point in three-dimensional space, whereas angular momentum does. And this idea of it pointing uh, counterclockwise is fine, but, but vectors don't curve. Vectors are straight lines. 
So we need another idea or another way of thinking about angular momentum as pointing in a straight line. And, and so that's where something called the right-hand rule comes in. And uh, the way this works, uh, let me go ahead and write this out. So you're probably going to need a separate sheet of paper if you haven't got one yet. But um, <laughs> maybe a couple. <clears throat> All right, so the right-hand rule, uh, you can think of it uh, two ways. But the best way, or bo for both ways, you always want to start, uh, I guess the first rule is uh, draw both vectors tail to tail. And notice that we are always, when we, we talk about the right-hand rule, we are always going to start with R because um, if we look back at what we said, we said torque is equal to R cross F, never F cross R. And that's important. And that's why we have to start with R. All right. That, that's, um, so the first rule is going to apply to R here. Okay, so uh, let me draw this here. Let's get some uh, color here for this one. Let's make R, uh, do I make it green? Kind of wanted to make R red. Oh, dang. Hmm. Let me make, let me, let me, let me go with green here for R. That is fine. And an R points just like that. Okay. So I always made a point of saying that R is a vector and it points back when we were uh, talking about torque, but you probably didn't really think too much of it or why I was doing that. All right, so let's look at it now. So we have this vector pointing like this, and we have the force vector pointing like this. And, and so we're going to pick this force vector up and put it tail to tail. So if we do that, we're going to put it right here. Ew, right through all my equations in my writing. Oh, well. Okay, so we're going to pick it up and put it tail to tail. The tail of the vector is where the arrow isn't. Um, all right, so you can see now that theta, right, that 30 degrees is right there. All right, so far so good. So what we're going to do then is we're going to start by, uh, we have two methods here. <clears throat> uh, so which method do you want to use? Well, let me, let me add another sheet of paper. <clears throat> and we'll we'll just we'll just go ahead and divide this in half. Or maybe I should just uh mm, we'll just say pick uh we'll, we'll just go like this. Um and then uh pick a method. All right, so once we've done this, uh, both vectors tail to tail, start with R, uh, pick a method. Uh, okay, so what method are we going to use? Well, the first method. And the first method, um, what you're going to do is you're going to point your, and I didn't label these, dang it, let me go ahead and label them. This is F, oh, wait, we're clear here. You probably haven't forgotten, but... I just want to make sure I don't forget. All right, the first method is, um, I'll, I'll just need some steps here. Uh, step A, um, we're going to um, point our fingers. Oh, and one, one more thing before, <laughs> make sure you use your right hand. You know, I, <laughs> you think that would be obvious, but... You know, you just never know. I know it's called the right hand rule, but make sure you use your right hand. All right, so you're gonna point your fingers. In the direction of R. Step B. And it'd be curl. In the direction of F. And step C would be your thumb points in a straight line in the direction of torque.
and this is going to determine what happens to the bolt, right? So if you're taking a bolt out of a picnic table or screwing a bolt into a picnic table, the, the way the torque points would determine which way that bolt moves. So let's go back up to our example here then and give this a try. So let's, let me see if I can zoom in. So what I want you to do is, is if I guess you can do this on your screen or if you draw this on your page, you can do it. Um, take your right hand, point your fingers in the direction of R, right? So your side of your hand is on the paper or on the screen. And then you're going to curl in the direction of F. And your thumb should point out of the screen or should point out of the page. And that means that the bolt you're turning is going to come out of the picnic table. Now, does that make sense? Well, let's go ahead and look back up here. We are going um, counterclockwise. We are going lefty-loosey. So that would bring the bolt out of the the picnic table. So that does make sense with what happens, what we see in reality when we use a wrench. All right, let's do another method in here, second method. All right, in this method, the first step is to point your thumb. Once again, you're using your right hand. Point uh, the thumb in the direction of R. Now, you, why are there two methods? because sometimes it's easier to use one. Um, sometimes students prefer one. Uh, this is actually an important idea in science. It's useful in magnetism or electricity, useful in chemistry even. And uh, so you do want to learn this. Uh, point your thumb in the direction of R. Your pointer finger is going to go in the direction of F. So let's put that down. Uh, let me, yeah, this is going to be your point. So I, I got to be careful how I... How I say, I don't, I'm going to take the word point out of, I guess I could just say index finger. We'll, we'll say that instead. We'll leave that. Let me erase that. Dang it. Struggling here. All right. So we're going to say index finger. I like to say pointer finger. Index finger. It's your your first finger, your pointer finger, index finger, whatever you want to call it, in direction of F. And then you are going to, your thumb then, or no, your, say your middle finger, your middle finger now points in the direction of the torque. All right, so now let's go back and give this one a try, right? Um, or I can just redraw it right here. Why not, right? Um, I think we said red was R. Okay. I think we said green was um, F, and it pointed like this. And that put theta right here. Something we're going to notice when we try this, so go ahead and give it a shot. You're going to point your um, thumb in the direction of R, your index finger, your pointer finger in the direction of F, and you notice theta now is in between your thumb and your index finger. Your middle finger now points straight up out of the page, and that is how you do the right-hand rule. So what we're saying then is, although we describe the direction back here of this torque, right, as being counterclockwise or positive, we could also describe it as out of the page. And this is the straight line that we were looking for as a vector, right, that, that, that um, <clears throat> we said that torque is itself a vector and points in a straight line, right, because I can draw this vector hat over my my torque and and that's why it's it, it's 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 true all right so vectors don't curve or anything um all right good let's go ahead and look at angular momentum now right 
So what we're saying then for angular momentum is, is, is very similar in that you have angular momentum about a uh, axis of rotation, about a pivot. So um, here we have the axis. Here we have our dotted line, which is, oh, that's a rough dotted line. All right, that right there, which is our perp. Uh, that means this angle right here is 90 degrees. And that this right here, this angle is theta. And theta is the yellow angle, which is right here, which is right here. And we can see, you might say, well, what are we looking at here? Uh, we're looking at a um, mass that is, uh, that is attached to this disk. And, and, then, and then given a velocity, right? The velocity is in a direction which is going to cause uh, a, a torque, right? A, a change in angular momentum to, uh, to the system here. And, and so um, <clears throat> that's, that's what we're seeing here, right? This mass, uh, or you could say the mass is, is yeah, it's going uh, to cause, it's going to have some angular momentum, about this axis of rotation, right? And uh, so what we have then um, is, is we can calculate the angular momentum of this, uh, I think they tell us it's a two kilogram mass here, right? Um, that's attached. And this mass is, let me see if I can, uh, let me give it a little color here. It is this purple dot right here. All right, that's the mass um, that, that we have there. And, uh, and anyways, uh, we can then go ahead and say that uh, uh, we can find our perp the same way we did before, right? Uh, just like we said before, our perp is equal to r sine theta. And then we can say that L, or angular momentum, is equal to r cross p. And we know that this is the same as us saying L, I'm using the script L, it doesn't really matter, um, is equal to R perp times P. Now what's P? P equals MV. And we can say that R perp is equal to R sine, R sine theta. And we got that from, um, from obviously from the Sokotoa, right, that we did before. So uh, we know that P, so we can leave it like this, or we can go even a step further, right, and say that L is equal to, uh, well, what's P? P is MV, right? So we can say R times M times V times the sine of theta. And, and that's kind of the same thing I have up here. I just wrote it slightly different, right? Ooh, oh, purple highlighter. I don't know about that. Uh, so I'm going to stick with the yellow. It's safe, and it's easy to see. All right, so... I wrote it pretty much just a little slightly differently right there. So we have angular momentum is RMV sine theta. All right, good, good. Um, and the right-hand rule applies to this too. So let's go ahead and solve this, right? They tell us that the mass is two kilograms. Its velocity is five meters per second. Um, let's go ahead and plug in some numbers here. Uh, R is uh, 0.2 meters again. You got all that right, okay. And angle here is, uh, is what? It's probably 30 degrees again. Let's go with that. I don't think I, I think I forgot to say. Let's correct that. All right, 30 degrees. All right, so we're saying sine 30. Okay, um, good. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times sine 30 is a half of 30, which is 5. 5 times 0.2 is 1. So we're saying that L is equal to 1 kg meters squared per second. All right, and now it comes this idea of sine. Well, once again, um, just like we said last time, this velocity is going to cause a... Um, a angular momentum which is going to be uh, counterclockwise or positive. So that's still true. Whoops, trying to write counterclockwise. So 
So, um, and, uh, the other thing, I guess I can write, write it all out just like normal. Um, or we can say, we can use the right hand rule and talk about what direction it would be, right? So let's go ahead and let's draw that really quick. And let's use the same as last time, right? We'll keep R as being, oh, I think last time we said R was green, didn't we? Dang, I'm forgetting. <clears throat> so we're gonna stick with R as being green. We're gonna stick with, we're gonna say, now you might notice this is velocity and you might say, well, isn't momentum uh, envy? Right. Well, yeah. This is, um, this is V right here in red, and in in because uh, let me go ahead and in in the mass is in purple. Right. We said that a second ago. Um. So we have M right there as the mass, but but uh, momentum points in the same direction as velocity. And I think I said that earlier. Um. If I didn't, I'm saying it right now, and. Um, <clears throat> So anyways, uh, my point is whichever way the velocity points is the way the momentum points. So down here, we can go ahead and write that. So we have our red R pointing like this, and we, we're going to put them tail to tail. I'm going to go ahead and label that. I, I keep forgetting. I think we, R is green. God, last I was making this. Uh, a lecture before this and R was always um, red. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so you have our green R. We have our red um, momentum vector, which we're going to put tail to tail. Theta is then going to go right here. And um, you can see it's, it's, it's similar to what we did last time, right? So... So go ahead and pick one of those right-hand rule methods. I'm going to do the second one, method two. I'm going to point my thumb in the direction of R, my uh, pointer finger, index finger, in the direction of P, which I'm going to label. And then my middle finger should point up uh, towards out of the page. So uh, I was going to say towards the ceiling. So we're saying um, that torque uh, point, can, we can describe it as one kg meters squared per second out of the page. All right, and, and there we have it. Okay, um, let's go ahead and, and talk about this next example. So here we got a rotten apple that's thrown across the cafeteria in the general direction of the trash can with a velocity of 12 meters per second. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a trash can right over here I'm just going to go ahead and draw it in. I'm sure the apple will make its way to the trash can, of course. So you can see. All right, here's our trash can over here. And uh, students are sitting along this path where this two kilogram, massive two kilogram apples flying at 12 meters per second. And uh, let's go ahead and draw. Uh, an R value for student A. Um, student A is sitting right here where I made this green dot. And, and I'm going to go ahead and draw R as a straight line pointed towards the apple. All right. And this is R right here, this green line. And, 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 and that's kind of hard or obnoxious to see. So I'm going to go ahead and label that. That's the, the R for student A, right? That's sitting right there. And uh, so it points like that. I'm putting a little black in there too, so it's easier to see. Okay, so uh, so what's going to happen here, right? Well, there's a velocity. Let's draw that in red right here for this apple. Label it V. And we want to know the angular momentum here for... Um, for, for this, uh, for this apple, right? And so we have an R value, we have a V value, um, but they also tell us a little more. They tell us that this apple takes this path right here, which I'll label in orange, dotted lines, 
towards the trash can. And we know that this distance between student A, they tell us, um, and I'll just go ahead and label it in green, and the orange dotted line is four, is four meters. All right, and <clears throat> that that's important there, right? Because that is a perpendicular distance between the line of action, right? This orange dotted line here uh, that that we see is is the line of action, and I can just go ahead and highlight what I'm talking about. So that's the line of action, um, is what I'm saying, and uh, and so why this is important is that four meters is see if i can zoom in a little bit so it's easier for you guys to see is our perp right and that's our perp for student a right and in in, in my point here is that um we can calculate angular momentum now because we know angular momentum is our perp times p right and um and so we don't have to worry about theta uh because we already have our perp and 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 so that that's a good thing, right? Because I don't see any angles for this triangle, so that would that would have been really tough. Um, so let's go ahead and solve it, right? So we're saying that uh, L is equal to R cross P. L then is equal to R perp um, times P. Uh, L is equal to uh, uh, R R perp, which we know times M V, right? And uh, so let's go ahead and plug values in. I, th I think we said our perp was four meters. Uh, the mass of the apple was two kilograms and the velocity of the apple was 12 meters per second. So what we're saying then is four times two is eight times 12 is 96 kg meters squared per second. And, and that's our uh, angular momentum of student A, or the apple about student A, right? It's angular momentum of the apple about student A. And if we look back up here, this red vector compared to this red dot that I'm about to highlight, let me see, compared to this red dot right here, that this red vector is going to spin about the red dot, how? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Just take that red vector across your page to the right, and you would say, clockwise. So we expect this to be, um, let me write that in, we expect this to be clockwise or negative. But if we were using the right hand rule, what would we then say, right? Well, we would take our vectors and put them tail to tail. Let's pick that, uh, um, what do we, keep? we keep using uh, green for the the vector, right? The, the radius. So let's pick that R and put that there. Um, let's take, and this is RA. Let's take, um, could I have used R perp? Yeah, sure, I could have. Um, and this velocity vector, let's take that and put it, where, where's student A sitting? A is sitting right there. Let's take that velocity vector and put it tail to tail. So let's take the, uh, well, actually, that's the, it's the velocity vector, but it's the momentum vector too. So I'm going to call it P. Um, I, I'll just, I'll write in parentheses, or velocity. All right, there you go. Uh, and, and, and so what you're now gonna do, right, you're gonna pick your uh, favorite method here. Um, I'll try uh, the, the first method, which I'll point my fingers in the direction, see if you can do it. Point your fingers in the direction of uh, R, right, because it's R cross P. Uh, curl in the direction of P, the, the smallest angle, right? And, and, and your thumb points into the page. Did I write that down for method one to use the smallest angle? Because if I didn't, I should have. Let me go back and check. Uh, point fingers in the direction of R, curl in the direction of F. Um, I, I'm gonna say use smallest angle. Because that will help um, for the first method. And, and there we have it. So uh, thumb points into the page. So we can describe that as being into the page. Try it again with the other method, just in case you did or haven't. Let's do it anyways. Um, let's go, uh, uh, this time we're going to go 
finger in the direction of RA, uh, or no, thumb in the direction of RA, pointer finger or index finger in the direction of P, and then your middle finger should be pointing down into the page or into the screen, um, and, and yeah, and that's right. Okay, so good. Either way, into the page, it works. Um, all right, let's try uh, the same thing now for student B, right? So we look at student B. Uh, let's go with the blue uh, vector. Okay. And we'll call this blue vector RB. We notice that um, now uh, we have this vector or this distance right here, which is 2m, 2 meters, which is r perp b, right? And so we have pretty much the same idea. We don't have to worry about angles because we can just go right to the fact that L equals uh, r perp times p. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm probably going to run out of room here. Oh, let's see. Let's add a page. All right, that's much better. Get rid of that. All right, so we're saying L is equal to R cross P, right? L is equal to um, R perp times P. Uh, L is equal to R perp um, times MV, right? So R perp is this time equal to two meters. Apple's still two kilograms, which is crazy big apple. Uh, at least I think that's heavy for an apple. Maybe it's not. Uh, it's almost five pounds, right? Four, four point four pounds. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and multiply that by the velocity. It's definitely moving fast, almost thirty miles an hour, <clears throat> twelve meters per second. I wouldn't want to get hit by that apple. I don't know about you. All right. So uh, that's gonna be forty-eight kg meters squared per second. And now if we go back up and look and see what that apple is, is how it's spinning about point B, um, we can see, right, that uh, it's going to be spinning how? Let's see. Let's look at that. Uh, so we'd want to say that it's spinning uh, counterclockwise, right? Yeah. Uh and, and, and which would be uh, positive. All right. So that, I'm talking here about the red vector compared to where student B is. Student B is going to be this, uh, let me highlight it with a little bit of blue. There's student B right there. And so that red vector is going to, vector is going to be spinning uh, counterclockwise about that blue point. Um, but but let's use the right hand rule, right? Uh, when we use the right hand rule, what do we get here? Let's go ahead and, and draw this down here. So we have a blue vector that I think looks like, oh God, not that. Let's put the highlighter on. Okay. So we're saying something like that this uh, let's put the let's put student B right here let's let's go ahead and draw the momentum vector or velocity vector I'm gonna call it the momentum vector right there let's call this one R B and and now um, we're gonna go ahead and in point, uh, our fingers in the direction of RB, right? Curl in the direction of the smallest. So I'm using method one here. Go ahead and give it a try. Point your fingers in the direction of RB. So the side of my hand is, is on the paper or on the screen. Um, I'm going to then curl my fingers in the direction of P and my thumb points out of the page. If I use method two, I'm going to start by pointing my... Oh, this is awkward. I'm going to point my thumb... Uh, I'm going to put my back of the hand on the screen. <laughs> I'm going to point my thumb in the direction of RB, my pointer finger in the direction of P, and then my middle finger curls up towards the ceiling and points out of the screen or out of the page. All right, so let's go ahead and add that. And if, 
And obviously, if you're not getting that correct, uh, make sure you just pause the screen there and, and give it a shot or draw it on your page. But you should be getting out of the page there for, uh, for that. Uh, all right. So anyways, so long story short, this is a positive 48 uh, kg meters squared per second. And this is a negative 96 kg meters squared per second. And then let's look at um, student C. Without calculating, we should be able to, to say what the answer is, right? And it's going to be uh, another positive 48, right? Why is that? Well, because what is the same about where students B and C are sitting? We would say R perp, right? R perp B is the same as R perp C. So what we're saying then is the angular momentum uh, of uh, of both of them is going to be the same, right? Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and write that down then. Um, for student C, it is going to equal positive 48 kg meters squared per second. And... Um, yeah, and that's the same we said as being, uh, what, out of the page? And we also said it's the same as being uh, counterclockwise. And then the question is, why is it the same? Because our perp for students... B and C is the same. I mean, yeah, I get it that uh, the R isn't the same for both, right? Student C is definitely farther from that apple. But R perp is the same for both of them. Um, and that's a result of the, of the Sokotoa, right? So um, it, it, it doesn't. And, and, and yeah, and, and, and so it doesn't matter because the, the perpendicular distance to that orange dotted line is going to be the same regardless. Okay. Very good. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to pause it there before I move on to this last example. Okay, so in this uh, last example here, uh, I, don't know, I don't know why it starts off with saying, can angular momentum be negative? We just saw... Um, that of course it can. Um, this was uh, uh, clockwise motion. Um, this was uh, end of the page. Uh, anyways, um, here we have an example where we have two masses that are sitting on a table and they're attached by some kind of device with a pivot on this table, right? And then two bullets are going to be fired that are going to hit these masses at the same time and they're going to spin about this pivot because they're attached together, and, um, and, 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 and I don't know if maybe a table is the best way to think of it, because you think uh, uh, there, there's going to be friction, but there's going to be no friction, and, and anyways, uh, maybe you can think of it as just on like a stand, right, that there's this stand right here, and both of these um, masses are going to be hit, and we want to know how it turns, right, Does it, is it going to turn this way? Or is it going to spin this way, right? Is is kind of the idea, and um, and and we want to know uh, with what angular momentum does this happen, right? Because both of these bullets are going to exert a force on impact, and that force is going to exert a torque, right? A torque causes a change in angular momentum, and uh, so um, we want to see what happens there. Uh, the tricky part about this problem is both bullets are going to collide inelastically with the masses. And we see this a lot in, in physics problems that anytime you have a collision, you need, you should be thinking, um, conservation of momentum. And, and so that's what we have to deal with first. And you can just think of this as an inelastic collision that is linear and we don't even have to worry about the rotation. Um, we just have a uh, two bullets. Let's go ahead and label them. This is uh, bullet B right here. Let's see if I get a. This is bullet B. Uh, it has a mass of 10 grams. Uh, it's going to hit block. We'll say block B. Put a B there. And, um, and it is a 
small distance away from the pivot for RB. Uh, we then have RA, we have block A, and we have uh, mass A, and we have, oh, I forgot to put a B over here, uh, mass A, and um, the mass of bullet uh, A. So I'll just call that MA. I guess I can't have them both be MB and MA. Oh, this is so difficult. Um, I guess we'll just keep the masses as M. That'll be much nicer of the bullets. And and then the um, the blocks will be MB and MA. That'll make sense. All right. So there we go. Some green here. Um, an RA is that length. The longer. And RB is this length. All right. So that's what we have, right? And then, um, and, and, and okay. So how can we think of this? Well, let's do conservation and let's, let's solve for each inelastic collision what the velocity is going to be, right? Because there's going to be a velocity for, um, say, this block, right, in this direction where I'm trying to draw this arrow not very well, right? And there's going to be a velocity in this direction. And, uh, and so I want to know what VB and VA are. Uh, let me go ahead and get a little highlighter there. What VB and VA are. Okay, so we can say then that PI equals PF. And um, we have on the initial momentum of for, for B, right? We, we should probably solve this. Um, one side at a time, and maybe if I'm careful, I can uh, get both of this on the same uh, page at the same time. Um, so I have uh, PI equals PF, and for, for this is for bullet B. And for bullet B, um, the initial momentum here is all coming from the bullet, right? And we didn't give it a velocity. Uh, this is really going to be um, V, whoops, if I come back up here, this is really going to be VBF um, and, and VAF. Uh, um, the initial velocity of the bullet, right? Uh, so what is that going to be? We'll just call that VI and um, I guess I can call it VIB, right? Um We're going to say that that's equal to 100 meters per second. This is not very realistic for a bullet. They're going to travel much faster than that. Uh, so, uh, but that's okay. Let's just make our life easy and, and go with that. And over here, we'll say VIA is also equal to 100 meters per second. All right, so what's going to decide this, right? Well, we can see that, that whichever um, side is going to win out here is going to be based on the different radii. Um, and also the different masses of the blocks. Looks like the block of mass A is a little bit larger. Um, so maybe that won't spin as fast, and then the uh, block B will spin faster, but, but momentum is P equals MV, so let's see, uh, let's see what happens here, right? All right, so uh, PI equals PF. Okay, so uh, initially, block B is just sitting there. So it's just not doing anything, but the bullet has momentum, right? So the bullet's momentum is, uh, is what the mass of the bullet. So it's going to be 10 grams. I'm probably gonna have to change that to kilograms, um, times VIB, which is a hundred meters per second. The final momentum is going to be now the bullet is going to stick to the block and the block b has a mass of 50 grams so we're going to say 10 plus 50 which is 60 grams and we're going to multiply that by vfb okay so we're going to get 1000 i think we're going to get away with not changing that <laughs> See that? Yeah, all right. 
So 1,000 divided by 60 is going to turn out to be 16.67 for VFB. All right. Then we can do the same thing for bullet A. I'm just going to draw this slightly staggered to the right here so I remember what side is what velocity. Um, and this time on the initial, it's still going to be 10 grams, right? Times 100 meters per second for block A. But the final is going to be different, right? Because this block has a mass of 100 grams. So we're going to say 110 over here when they both add together times VFA. All right, so we're going to get 1,000. over 110. All right, once again, didn't have to worry about the units. So that was nice. Uh, we're gonna get 9.09. .09. All right, good. Um, we can now say, uh, we can now find the angular momentum of each um, of each uh, system, right? Block B's system and block A's system, and then we can uh, calculate the the angular momentum, the net angular momentum, or the total angular momentum uh, for the the entire system. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's say here that um, angular momentum of B is equal to R perp times P, right? And the same thing for A. And these are gonna be slightly different, right? Because we know that for B, uh, R perp is, is because it is perpendicular, right? I can draw in red here, there's a 90 degree angle right there between the momentum or the velocity and R, and the same is true over here. Right, so these are our perps. Um, so for B, it's 0 0.5 times uh, the mass of B, which I think was was at 60. This time I am gonna flip it to kilograms. I'm not gonna press my luck here. So for block B, the total was 60. So we're saying, um, so what would that be? 0.06. Uh, kilograms all right and uh, times its velocity which is that 16.67 meters per second and if we do the math there uh, what do we get uh, I think we should get LB is equal to um, 0.5 zero zero one kg meters squared per second what about a sign here right um can we put a sign on there i think we definitely can uh okay i think we're good here um i think we can put a sign on on bullet b it's gonna spin this way which is clockwise so we're saying that's gonna be uh, negative. All right. And hopefully I can fit this over here if I write small enough. All right, so for LA, um, we know that R perp is equal to what? I think this was 1.0 or 1.5, 1.5 meters. Okay. times uh, the mass, which is, I think we said was 110, yeah. But we said that was in grams, so we're gonna flip that to kilograms, 0 0.110 kilograms. And then we're gonna multiply it by its velocity, which is that smaller velocity, just like we predicted it being smaller, of 9.09 .09 meters per second. So then we can say LA, and this is obviously gonna be in the positive direction, 
uh, is going to equal 1.5. Well, that's nice. Uh, kg meters squared per second. All right, so then we can just go ahead um, to wrap this up. Uh, I think I have enough room here. We can say that uh, L or angular momentum net or total uh, of the entire system is equal to LB plus LA. So we can say then that L net is equal to negative 0 0.5001 plus 1.500. We can probably round here, you know, uh, <laughs> whoops, oh dang, let me write that again. We can round here and get away with it and uh, just call that 5.00. So 1.5 minus 0.5 is just going to equal 1. So we're saying uh, L net is going to equal positive 1 kg meters squared per second. Or we could say um, 1 uh, kg meters squared per second counterclockwise. So what we're saying then is that uh, this is going to rotate uh, counterclockwise, which is um, is uh, is what? Well, uh, counterclockwise would be um, that block A is winning out. So we're seeing that uh, it's longer it's longer at distance from the axis rotation along with its greater mass is going to uh to win out here uh in this uh in this uh two different uh two different torques uh that is happening right because there's a a clockwise and counterclockwise torque and um yeah, uh, yeah, I think we're seeing the effect of uh, block A having more mass and just being a greater distance, um, and may and 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 that allowing it to to create more torque. Uh, I'm wondering if it's just just the fact that it's just the greater distance, that the greater mass. Um. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's helping too, right? Because, yeah, we do have a larger mass over there. It didn't help the velocity, but it's helping the angular momentum. Um, so, yeah, so either way, uh, that's that's what we're seeing happen, and this wants to spin uh, in the counterclockwise or positive direction and not the clockwise direction. All right, um, that's it. So have a good rest of your day.